Hi everybody, it's Poya Lamar, and we are backstage at Drag Queens of Comedy here in San Francisco at the historic Castro Theater, produced by Sasha Soprano, and I have with me winner of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 6. Season 6, the only season that matters. Yes, it was fun. Good to see you. Bianca Del Rio! Hi! So, I'm curious. Yeah, you're right. Season six, the only season that matters. Well, no, it's an interesting season, and I, I felt that I might be a little biased about it because I had experienced it, but it is difficult once you've done the show to watch the show. So I only saw a couple of episodes, and it's different for me. I have a different outlook than most people. But um, I think it's a great opportunity, and it's amazing if you use it properly. So God bless the next bitch. We filmed the finale. We don't know who won yet. Uh, so we'll see what happens. So you, you said you only watched a few episodes, yeah. but... Clearly, you have to be bombarded with information. Do you have a favorite? Of the I, I don't have any information. I mean, I see things on Facebook. I mean, I'm Southern, so I'm going to have to go with Ginger Minch because I'm Southern and I'm one of those people where you've got to have each other's back because you're Southern, especially once your uncle leaves you, which is my situation. But uh, she's great. I do love her. I've met all of them. They're all lovely, but you know, it's they're all very different. You can hear the Kiki happening next door. Yeah, it's Bunny. That's Bunny and Shangela, but mostly Bunny. Yes. Bunny, Bunny. Yes. You can hear. They can hear Bunny. She's still back in New York right now. Of course. Ah. Nobody wants her, but yeah, she's there. Ah, so I would think that as a as a performer who paid your dues tenfold before you even got on the show, you would have to think that there's some element of that with Ginger too. She's been around. She's done no, I think, but that doesn't always make it right. I think that it's one of those things where people often ask, "What's the best advice you can give someone going on the show?" Mm -hmm. And I say this: you have to know yourself. That's the only thing you're in control of. You don't know the challenges they're going to give you. You don't know what they're going to critique. And for me, there was many moments when even things that might have been easy to other people, like the comedy challenge, I was horrified because it may not work on television. Television. What I'd done for 19 years in a bar may not translate. So you have to sit back and think about all that. So all of it comes with risk, and you never really know. You don't know what they want. And as I said, it is a television show and a competition, which means they can do whatever they want. As a comedian, like when you're getting ready to go on to a comedy challenge, for example, I would be terrified, like, yeah. oh my god, if this doesn't work on television, everything that I'm known for is... Sure. And you don't know, like I said, you don't know what they're gonna do, and you film it, and it's done, and then months later it airs. So it is kind of mind fucking. The advantage I had in the end was that I was in really good company. I was in company with two very talented people, with George Delano and Courtney Act, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, because most of the time, if I would have been up there with somebody like Laganja or Gia Gunn, I would have wanted to kill myself. So I was with some good talent. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Is that I was in company of good, talented people, so anybody could have won. It wasn't a slap in the face. It doesn't mean that I'm better because I won or that they're worse. No, anybody could have won. And, and they're my friends, and they're genius, and they're great at what they do. I mean, they've all been successful. We've all been working since it happened. Of course. So it's what you make of it. Some of the most successful queens didn't win the show. You know, there's Latrice. You know, there's Courtney. There's, of course, Adore. And, you know, it, it's amazing to see them try. Shanta, for Christ's sake. Absolutely. You know, Walking along and working and brilliant and good at what they do. So it's not about winning, it's just about delivering your best thing and being a good person. Sometimes it feels like, as a viewer, that and after the fact, it feels like winning is almost a curse. Yeah. Yeah, well, because I mean, well, there's assholes. I mean, there's Sharon, who's a fucking douche. But the thing is, that there's lots of us that do it, but I think when they forget... When I didn't they, expect that. No, though. please, it's true. She's a douche. The thing is that people forget that when you're on the show, it's not so much about being fierce, it's about having some humanity and being a human being, which drag queens forget, because this is their five minutes on television, so they think, girl, I gotta do all this, and... Girl, it's too much. Sometimes too much. It's too, well, and nobody ever said, a drag queen never says it's too much unless they're taking black dick in prison. That's when it's too much. Not for me. No, of course not. Because you're consistent. Thank you. You heard it here from Bianca Del Rio. <laughs> <laughs> and it also explains the sound. Go ahead. Edit. <laughs> I did want to ask you about Joan Rivers. You were one of the last. I killed her. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I didn't kill her. Well, I mean, you guys were in bed together. Uh, Next thing you know, dead, dead, dead. Yeah, like Bunny said, if you, I'm a killer in bed, and if you want to talk to any of my ex-boyfriends, girl, you need to use a Ouija board. So yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it was um, an 
an amazing opportunity. You know, it's one of those things I was unaware of what the show was. Uh, I just was asked if I would do it, and I said, Joan Rivers, of course I'll do it. I had a gig in Ohio, and we worked it out for me to swap it, and then I went and filmed that day. She was lovely, she was kind, she was genuine, she was funny as shit. And we were supposed to film 15 minutes, and then we ended up filming an hour of us just cackling. And uh, it's something I'll never forget, it was amazing. I would think, given the kind of humor and comedy that you are so renowned for, that she would have had to be a huge influence. Oh, totally. Oh no, I love her and Don Rickles. I love anybody who's smart. But also it's a different, it's a different ball of wax. It's fascinating that we were having a conversation about the fact that here she was genius and Joan Rivers and she couldn't sell out Madison Square Garden for someone like Kathy Griffin, who I think is not funny, is selling out. So it's interesting how the world works. You know, I just thought, I love that rapid fire wit and funny is funny and funny is funny. No. And I don't find that with many people. Uh, now I'm curious, why don't you find Kathy Griffin? Funny. Because it's always this. Let me tell you a story that's so amazing and so genius, and there's never a fucking punchline. Ever! Like, no, the zinger. No, you, nothing. You love the zinger, though. Well, you need to do it. If I'm paying for a comedy show, give me something. Go and give it. I don't like all this bullshit where all this fucking foreplay and you don't get fucked. It's not cute. I don't find it funny. I, yeah. I don't. Never did. I, you know, I'm curious. I, I was just curious because of the fact that. I find you wildly entertaining, and I've been to see Kathy Griffin in concert, and funny, but not not funny, funny. not like oh, I'm in tears, not like not like Lisa Lampanelli, where oh, I Lisa is hysterical. Like my friend literally fell out of her seat. She's Sister funny. Roma, a Sister Roma literally fell on the floor. Lisa is hysterical. Wanda Sykes is hysterical because they're smart people, you know, and they have something to say, which is genius. But I, I definitely don't find her. And I would give credit where credit's due, but I don't I don't find her. Well, the, the gays fucking love her. Well, the gays I mean. love her because she plays the gay card. Oh, I love the gays. The gays are, fuck you, cunt. Girl, I did a gig with her at Disney and she was such a twat. $75,000 later, 20 minutes of some lame material. Not fond of her. Not fond of her. You, in this five minutes we've been on this video, on my phone. On your phone, take note. I know, right? Girl, it's a YouTube video, bitch. It's sure. not like a high-budget sure, thing, right? Sure. We can tell it's not. I know it's not high-budget. You're here. Tell me the story. Girl, this is still slightly higher budget than Untucked this year. <laughs> <laughs> that would only be funny to me if I watched. So go ahead, tell me. What's your story? Well, um... Now I fucking forgot. She read me. Uh, I didn't I forgot you. the goddamn story. I'm not reading. I'm stating the obvious. Oh, you know, what I was going to say to you is that, like, you have had no problem just, like, Sharon read. Like, but because Kathy, it's true. You're true. You're true. Well, because it's true. But, but other people have opinions, and other people may not agree with me, and that's fine. I was curious if there's ever that, and I asked this of Jackie B in a different video interview, which I'll link in this one, but is there ever a time when you're like, it's too far? No. No. I'm a man in a wig. What does it matter? Consider the source. I'm not standing on the White House with a megaphone going, the world is fucked up. No, I'm doing a fucking drag show. I'm in, I'm in San Francisco doing a comedy show. I'm hanging out with you. Obviously, my standards are low. It's really not, fucking it's low. Not, it's not that serious. But people can disagree. And of course, that's what social media is about. Somebody can disagree and someone can hate it, and that's fine. But it doesn't affect me on a personal level. No. If I were 20, it might have been different. But now that I'm old, no, I don't give a shit. Fuck them. I remember... The, one of the more recent times that you were here in San Francisco, she was at the cafe, which is also the nightclub that I'm at on Sunday nights. She was there on a Saturday evening. Uh, a whole incident went down with a Latino in the audience yeah. yelling at you. Yeah. It went viral. Well, it was a weird thing because it happened, and I didn't realize somebody was filming it. And then I left the club, went to my hotel, passed out, got on a plane, got to another city, and that's when I opened my computer and I saw that everybody had something to say. It's so stupid. It's like some fucking drunk fag who was Amen. in a spick who felt the need to try to go after me and said that I should respect the Latin community because they pay my bills. And my response was, you're Latin. Pay your own fucking bills, dick. I pay taxes. I pay for your 16 fucking children. Eat me. And I buy piñatas for my niece's birthday. So his family's been well supported by me. <laughs> it's, it's so stupid is that he didn't realize that I'm a spick. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Frankly, I would love to fucking kick him like a pinata and hope a Tootsie Roll falls out of his ass. It was so stupid. It's like, do your research before you come there. You're not gonna win. I have a microphone and I'm far smarter than you are. And so that's what it is. That's the thing that slays me when people 
it, whether they're heckling a comedian or that you know I am see a drag show. But sure. like, I'm like, girl, I got the microphone. It You're doesn't gonna matter. Win. I'm going to win. win. Bottom line is this: at a drive-thru, you have a microphone, which means what? You're going to order the food and say how it's done. I'll give you the bag, but when you open it, you're going to get a surprise, motherfucker. Hmm. It's true. So, tonight you are performing with a huge cast of other comedic drag queens, and often you're doing this by yourself. What's sure. it like to be in an environment surrounded oh. by so many, like some of them legendary? Oh my god, stars. nothing better, nothing better. Uh, you know, of course, the people who love Bunny and Jackie, I mean, geniusly funny, Coco Peru, friends of mine, and I'm very lucky to say friends, I've, I've met them early on. I knew of them way before uh, I even started doing drag. Of and sat back and said, these bitches are genius. And they're still doing it, which is so amazing. So I love Bunny's doing the same set, Bunny's <laughs> And the same tights. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, but it's an amazing thing because, you know, I sat back and admired them many, many years ago and uh, they're still doing it, still smart and still funny and still important and still making a living. There's something to be said. I mean, we drag race girls are treated very well, I have to say. Right. The power of television, but it's what you make of it. And so with it, I can sit back and say, this is great. And so actually, Jackie B, Bunny, me, and uh, Sherry Vine are planning a tour to do together in the fall, which I'm excited about. Well, it's, it's, and it's so funny, of course, because of the fact that of those four individual names that you just gave, these are people who pre, you know, predated totally. Drag Race. Totally. They were doing, to some degree, what you're doing, no. and make, paving the way. But they, they definitely set the standard, and that's what's so amazing about it, is that they're still working and they still have it, which is genius. And I think a lot of people don't know that. I think now our culture knows what they know from television and know it from the show. And no offense to the show, because it's definitely of changed course. my life. But it's one of those things. I had messages from Buddy, Sherry, and Jackie, uh, right at the Coco Peru. They were all beyond kind while the show was going on. And they said, if anybody can do this, you can do this, and we support you. I mean, in many ways, different versions of it. But I thought that was very sweet and commendable mm -hmm. because they're good people and they're, they're fucking smart. You know, smart is smart and funny is funny. If you had watched this season, yeah. which you didn't. No, I saw episodes. Might have been a good call. We were in and out of the country, so I didn't get to see much of it. Right, but like, so many of the, these new girls, like, we're talking about iconic people, Coco and Bunny and yeah. Jackie, who were doing this for 25 years, Jackie said. You know, that's, that's think crazy. about that 25 yeah. years ago. And these new, some of these new girls, they got all of their education about drag and anything from season four on. You know what I mean? Well, the or thing whatever. Is also, is that people don't realize that you have to have your own niche. I mean, and we all do something different. And you sit back and you go, you sing, you dance, you tell jokes, you do this, you do parodies. All that's amazing. But instead of breaking somebody down, you sit back and go, bitch, that's what you do great. This is what I do. And you find what's going to work for you. Too many people now see what's working for other people and they think, oh, I should do that. No, you don't. If you don't have the quips for it and the brains for it, don't do it. But right. now they think they throw on a look and it's what it is. I mean, I'm constantly ridiculed. Oh, I wore the same dress. I did this. Yes, I did wear the same dress and I won. And Rue wears the same dress. You've got a look that works for her. You've got a look that works for Bunny. You've got a look for everyone else. Nothing wrong with that. It's just what it is. And everybody who's tried 20 different looks, look what they got. Bottom three. Yeah, it, you don't have to be a jack of all trades. Just find what you do. Oh well, no, just find what works. But when you go on the show, you have to be able to sing, dance, act, so, and do comedy on some level. Because that's the requirement. It's like going to the Olympics and going, oh, now i got to swim? You're an asshole. That's what you, that's what you signed up for. What, you know, in addition to this upcoming tour, what other projects have you got going on? Well, I've been traveling with my own show, which is over the next day, and uh, I'm going to be working on a show with Buddy and Jackie and Sherry, and I'm also doing a movie, a friend of mine wrote, uh, called Hurricane Bianca, we're filming in July. Willem said that she's part of that. Willem is in it. Willem yeah. plays my friend, so it's acting. It really um, is acting. Willem plays my best friend in the movie, so I'm excited about it. Jocelyn Fox from my season is in the show, in the movie as well, so it, it's going to be fun. I, um, I was just in Portland with Jocelyn Fox. Hi, Jocelyn. She's great. We love her. She She's adorable. Oh my gosh, she, she's the cutest thing, really. She's very sweet. Love her to death. And her husband adorbs. Very nice. Yeah. Doing so much touring, as you do, and she always gets asked back, people. Well, that says plenty. You gotta work. work. You gotta work. Um, is it hard to come up with new material for your show? Uh, no, it depends. I think the audience will give it to you. That's the advantage, you know, when you're there, it's like people often say, you know, where do you find inspiration? If you can just look at people and you figure it out. And also the great thing is that people want to see you, so they're kind of tipsy and excited and then you can just run with it. Absolutely. That's what it is. For those of you who are out there who are thinking about booking a RuPaul's Drag Race person, <laughs> she's punctual, she's fucking funny, she well, packs the house, I she's do a professional. Job. It's called doing your fucking job. 
Listen, yeah. this is the golden ticket. I'm grateful for it, and I appreciate it. Great chatting with you. Great chatting with you. Thank you. Um, mwah. 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 <laughs> That's acting too. What's her name? <laughs> You're so much fun, <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like coffee. It smells better than it tastes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Unlike ass. Yes. Different. Smells horrible. Tastes better. Uh huh. Yes. I know everything. Okay.